Simulation Theory, Chapter 10, Message in the Movies, Part 1, 1115, Restate My Assumptions, 1, Mathematics is the Language of Nature, 2, Everything around us can be represented and understood through numbers, 3, If you graph these numbers, patterns emerge, therefore, there are patterns everywhere in nature, Maximilian Cohen in the movie Pi, Misunderstood Last Time. In the appendix of my previous book, I remember choosing my life in the afterlife dimension, there was a section entitled Recommended Viewings, with a note in parenthesis that read, After viewing all of these titles, you'll be nuts too. Some people thought those were movies I was suggesting other people to watch because I enjoyed them for the entertainment value. I was suggesting watching the films for concepts about science or life. So in this section, five years later, I will give a brief explanation about why I had those titles listed and what the viewer can gain from consuming the information. Download the PowerPoint presentation entitled Reality Has Become Science Fiction at www.simulation-theory.com to go along with this chapter as a visual aid. Concepts are my concern. I hope this section opens you up to a whole new way to watch movies. People think I'm kidding around when I tell them I don't watch movies to be entertained. I go to be informed and educated. It sounds like a joke, but I'm not kidding. I go to learn concepts. The literal truth of a movie isn't important. It's the exposure to new ideas, concepts, and possibilities that I go for. Learning concepts is my form of entertainment. I am edutained. I don't go to just see any movie. The movie has to have the promise of teaching me something interesting or engaging my mind. When we watch a movie or TV show, we are investing roughly two hours of our life into the viewing. Time is something you can never get back, and oddly enough, you cannot save it. It is constantly being spent. Paying money to see a movie isn't a concern to me. I can make the money back. However, I cannot get the time that I spend back. So I try to only invest my time in things I can get an educational return on. Time spent is forever. Reading this book? Good investment. Society teaches us to believe that a movie is make-believe unless it says based on a true story. Based on a true story doesn't mean it is 100% accurate, but it has elements that resemble what actually happened, but is probably glamorized or sensationalized to make it more interesting. I found that most people watch based on a true story movies like they are in fact 100% accurate and true, but discard fiction or science fiction as completely made up with no resemblance to truth or reality if it doesn't have that based on a true story seal of approval. When I was younger, I had seen a few movies that were labeled science fiction, but the subject matter dealt with things that I knew were real and existed. At that point on, I decided to view all movies as if they were all were based on a true story, and it made my movie viewing from that point forward a very interesting experience. You should try it sometime. Why not? Truth is revealed a little bit at a time through these films. Every movie has some truth in it, including horror movies. Nightmare on Elm Street and Poltergeist have metaphorical truths as the main idea. The main idea there is you must confront your fears or face a hidden truth, reveal a lie you have locked inside instead of running from them or not acknowledging why they exist. The more you run away, the more problems you have. What you resist persists. I realized recently that the original Star Wars trilogy has been such a major part of my life that I subconsciously believe the events in that movie are actual historical events. After all, the beginning of the movie starts with a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. As a kid, I believed it was possible that a long time ago, somewhere far out there in space, this probably did happen. It must be based on a true story. As I grew older... I found that indeed Star Wars is based on a true story, like most movies are, but fictionalized, so a person can interpret it how they want. You might be reading this snickering at me because I admit that I thought and still think Star Wars was a part of actual history, but it is I who snicker at you. How many historical movies have you watched and believed every scene of it as true, like the director had a time machine and brought his video camera back to the time and taped what it was like back then, and is showing it to you now. Most of history is a made-up story based on a true story. 
Information Disguised. In school, we learned the concept of Shakespeare writing his plays for all audiences. He put intelligent information in the play for the elite and intellects and disguised the information around sword fights, love plots, and drama for the masses. Those that knew what to look for would delight in the brilliant discourse of concepts and ideas, and the rest would gleefully jolly in the action. Today's cinema is no different. There are grand concepts hidden in many movies about new technology, psychology, business, strategy, science, mathematics, and other helpful insights all disguised around car chases, fight scenes, mesmerizing special effects, shootouts, and love plots, all to keep the masses interested. I'm well aware that this is what is required to sell tickets. It was no different in Shakespeare's time. There is a demand for action. I'm campaigning to create a demand for more knowledge, information-based movies. When I say the Matrix is reality, I don't mean I take an absolute literal interpretation of every aspect of the movie as real. What I mean by that is, I take the concept presented in the Matrix of living in a simulated world as reality, and all I ask is for others to simply consider it. Just consider it. You don't have to believe it, but consider the idea. I believe hidden truths are communicated in the movies I watch. Sometimes it seems as if movies are interconnected with each other and there is a hidden message broadcasted out to those that know how to receive it. Not everyone sees it because people have a selective exposure to things. So if you're in the theater to see car chases, action and sexy actresses, actors, you'll be focused on receiving that information. If you go into movies with the idea that a special message is being broadcast to you, you will receive that message. I recognize the importance of keeping people civil and orderly. For many people, ideas that stray from what they have set in their minds as reality disrupts their lives and they act irrational. Some of the truths can complicate an individual's perspective on their existence, so these movies are presented or disguised as fiction and sci-fi. This is done so the common viewer can walk away with a backdoor option thinking, oh, that's just a movie, it's not real. The information is communicated to those that know how to read between the lines. The idea gets communicated without the panic. The masses seem to find comfort in seeing the same situations repeated over and over again, and that is exactly what they're getting. If you think I'm looking too far into things, that there aren't any hidden messages, then it's really sad. That means we're just watching the same storylines recycled with the same elements of car chases and other action scenes. I even think some of the movies are designed to introduce ideas that are real in a fictional manner to decondition us in the event should the public become aware of its reality. Think about on September 11 when all of the people in New York were running through the streets with smoke all around them. We said, it seemed as if it wasn't even real. It looked like a Hollywood film. The power of images. What images are you putting into your brain? These movies are shown all over the world. I can't imagine what people who have never been to the United States must think our country is like. I have been told that I give movies too much credit, that it's just a bunch of druggies in California coming up with this stuff, which may be true. But I use movies as a reference tool to share concepts with others because hundreds of millions of people consume many movies over the course of a year, whereas far less people consume maybe one or two books a year. Effective communication requires a frame of reference. Using a concept from a movie that millions have seen and have a mental frame of reference is more effective than talking about a book that not many people have read or people pretend to have read, for example, the Bible, the Da Vinci Code. Just because a book is purchased doesn't mean it has been read. But chances are, if you purchased the movie ticket, you sat in the theater and consumed the information, unless you fell asleep or walked out. There comes a point where movies lose their ability to inform you anymore. They become more of a confirmation of what you already believe. I think I've reached that point, but the journey there was exciting and rewarding, and I want to share the learning experience. So now, I'm going to play the role of movie critic without criticizing or even reviewing the movie itself, but share the real-world similarities that are showcased in these films so you could understand why I take my movie viewing experience so seriously, and maybe education will become your new entertainment, edutainment. Ask yourself this. You see technology in movies... You see it with your own eyes. Even if it's special effects, the idea now is out there. So if someone hadn't created it yet, someone now knows that it is possible to create it, and it will then exist. Get the concept. Don't let the double think trick your mind. 
Oh, it's just special effects. No. You just saw a new invention on television that may not be available to the mass market to buy, but it exists somewhere. Maybe just one exists, but it exists, and thus it is real. Many prototypes get scrapped. People don't want to learn about reality. They want to escape reality. Here is a new way to see these movies. Your focus becomes your reality. Research this stuff in further detail on the web. Wikipedia does an excellent job of explaining the science in most of these movies. Make every minute of your life count. Simulated Reality Films Matrix, the godfather of simulated reality films. People remember where they were on 9-11. People remember where they were when JFK was shot. And people remember the first time they saw The Matrix. The more I learn about computer technology and then watch it again, the more I appreciate it. Many people don't get it. They think it's just science fiction or techno cycle babble BS. Let us go through some of the important dialogue in the movie and see if they resemble real life or some sci-fi made up world. The Matrix is a system, Neo. That system is our enemy. When you're inside, you look around. What do you see? Businessmen, teachers, lawyers, carpenters. The very minds of the people we are trying to save. But until we do, these people are still a part of that system, and that makes them our enemy. You have to understand, most of these people are not ready to be unplugged, and many of them are so inert, so hopelessly dependent on the system, that they will fight to protect it. Sounds like real life to me, which is why it is powerful. When we are children, we are asked, what do you want to be when you grow up? When alternate ideas are presented to people, they reject them violently. People go to war over religion. That is far more ridiculous to me than any simulation theory idea. People are indoctrinated with an ideology at any of the professions. The matrix is everywhere. It is all around us, even now in this very room. You can see it when you look out your window or when you turn on your television. You can feel it when you go to work, when you go to church, when you pay your taxes. It is the world that has been pulled over your eyes to blind you from the truth. These are more things that resemble the world we live in, not some made-up world. The word matrix is now synonymous with the word paradigm. Matrices in math and computer programming are real things that calculate or define multiple dimensions. The matrix supercomputer that generated reality in the movie is what the concept of simulation theory is all about. The matrix supercomputer generates and or calculates every single variable of reality every moment. The green characters going up and down the screen represent those endless variables constantly in motion interacting with each other. In real life, we have supercomputers that attempt to accomplish this, but aren't able to calculate everything yet. People are grown in fields by robots and plugged into a computer-generated reality to keep them alive so the robots can harvest their energy. When people die, where do they go? Why do people even exist? How do we know we aren't in the same thing? When I go to sleep, I enter a dream world. This dream world consumes one third of my life. Cypher learns the truth and wants to be plugged back in. Ignorance is bliss. Think about cows. Cows are basically grown and given a nice little life and then are slaughtered for our consumption. That is real. That is insane if you think about it. We raise cows to eat them. I edited out all of the martial arts, action scenes, and love plot out of Matrix and got 22 minutes of quality philosophy on life. I also did this with Matrix Reloaded. They will be available on my website, http colon forward slash forward slash www.simulation-theory.com until they tell me to take it down. Fair use for educational purposes. Matrix Reloaded. The scene with the oracle on the bench. The scene with the architect. The scene with the French Merovingian guy and the scene with the counselor. That's the movie right there in 22 minutes. The rest is fights and motorcycle chase scenes. Understanding and defining reality is probably the most important thing to me in life, and that is why Matrix and the concepts of this book, Simulation Theory, are so important to me. If you're a person looking for love, you may enjoy romance films more because they may discourse on what true love means. My focus is on truth, and I'm fancied by movies that talk about what truth is, or to pick situations that exist right under our noses that we aren't aware of. 13th Floor. 
This movie came out at the same time Matrix came out and had a similar concept and even had a similar green and black color scheme on their print advertisements. The people in 13th Floor were computer programmers who created a simulated world only to find out that they too were part of a simulation. They created a simulation within the simulation. There are scenes that show what people may do if they found out that nothing was real. This movie is simulation theory in film format. It might be what sparked the concept to me. Dark City. Nobody knows where Shell Beach is, yet they all swear they've been there. Have you ever talked with people who claim absolute realities without having experienced it? How about stereotypes people have about races of people of which they've never met? How about how everyone says you cannot breathe air on Mars, but no human to public knowledge has been there to verify it? Mars? Nah, can't go there. There's no oxygen. Oh, oh, you've been there? The people in Dark City all pass out at like midnight and have memories implanted into their minds. In the end, they find out it's a floating city in space, and they've lived the complete false reality as an experiment for aliens. Truman Show. Have you ever felt your life is a TV show being watched by people? Is reality real? How can I know for sure? Vanilla Sky. My best friend was so excited after he saw this film, he told me to see it as soon as possible. He said it was like The Matrix. During the first hour and a half of the movie, I was wondering what the heck he was talking about. But then right when I was about to give up on his endorsements, the magic began, and my time was well spent. The movie for me starts in that bar scene when the guy tells Tom Cruise, David, you control all of these people. And Tom Cruise says, oh yeah? Well, if I did control them, I wish they would all just shut the f up. And they do. And he's bewildered. And I was awestruck. Big deal, John. It's just a movie. I believe that we generate our entire reality from our subconscious. Not our conscious, but our subconscious. Tom Cruise's character was having subconscious problems which were causing his cryogenically frozen simulated dream state to become a nightmare. In real life, if you have subconscious problems, they will manifest into real life problems of many forms. You could lie to people, but you can't lie to yourself. You can try to lie to yourself, but your subconscious, your conscience, knows the truth. His mind rejecting the artificial utopian life he was having refers to what Agent Smith tells Morpheus in The Matrix when he has him captured. Did you know that the first Matrix was designed to be a perfect human world? Where none suffered, where everyone would be happy. It was a disaster. No one would accept the program. Entire crops were lost. Some believed we lacked the programming language to describe your perfect world. But I believe that, as a species, human beings define their reality through suffering and misery. The perfect world was a dream that your primitive cerebrum kept trying to wake up from, which is why the Matrix was redesigned to this, the peak of your civilization. Remember how I said earlier that it is almost like these movies are interconnected with hidden messages? We have the same problem happening in two movies, humans rejecting utopian worlds. This is very concerning to me because one of my goals in life is to create a utopian earth. The research is showing that people don't want it. This is massively conflicting for me because I want to remove all conflict and complaining from earth and the people want it. They want problems and they want to complain. Life extension. A simulated reality implanted into your brain. Cryogenics. Memory implants. Just like in Dark City. Concepts interconnected again. Science fiction is based on real theoretical ideas or ideas that are being tested. I received a voicemail on my cell phone from my friend after seeing Vanilla Sky that was excellent. I saved it to my computer and made a video of it and even put the actual phone message and video on the internet. Here is the transcript. We, we posed the question another, the other night ago of why Hollywood stars make so much money. The answer to that question is because they continuously keep us plugged in to the Matrix. Constantly. We're just only focusing on the Matrix. And then you hear the answer or the question constantly on Sports Center or on other sports shows and on the internet and whatever posed by professors. Why do professional athletes make so much money? All right? Why does Derek Jeter make so much fucking money? Because Derek Jeter, as an athlete, is not just an athlete, he's a product. He's a product that we see on television, he's a product that we see everywhere. And the old and middle aged people 
just plug themselves into the Matrix, and it just takes up their their mind just watching Derek Jeter and watching the, the cool shit that he can do. And little kids become fascinated. And then what, college sports, college basketball, college football, college football destroys uh, the GPA the, of college students around the the, the, the the country every fall semester because everyone is just completely obsessed with college football. So what is that doing? That's taking you away from learning, expanding your mind. All it's doing is plugging you into the matrix. So you watch that day and night. So you spend one day a week, every Saturday, from morning till night, watching the television, plugged into the television. That's all that it is. It's all fucking anything is, man. And so it's the reason that sports stars and movie stars are paid so much money is because they keep us plugged into the television. They keep us plugged into the fucking matrix, and we like it. It's not that... It's not that they're advertising a great product, and that, that it's not that these people, these companies or sports teams or whatever, are, are selling their product to us as a product because we want it, because we like it, and they want to satisfy us. It's because our minds like it, and our minds are just continuously wanting to stay plugged into the matrix. And the more kind of like that, the more special effects, and the more home runs they give us, and the more cool moves they give us the more our minds refuse to let us unplug ourselves from the Matrix, even if we want to. It keeps us plugged into the Matrix. It makes us just want to stay there. And it keeps everyone, everyone in the Matrix. It keeps everyone in one way or another. Whether you think you're a slave or whether you think you're a freed mind, one way or another, you're plugged into the Matrix and all that keeps you in there constantly. This was an excellent paradigm changer for us at the time. Nowadays, it's kind of funny to look back on it, but we were young guys learning about our world that was pulled over our eyes. That voicemail speech created a new way for us to approach everything. Vanilla Sky is what sparked the voicemail, and the voicemail changed our method of communication with each other. We made sure our conversations were meaningful and right to the point so as to not waste each other's time. I started saving the quality voicemails that I received from all my friends that would leave insightful discourses and posted them on a website called John Lippy's Cell Phone on www.soundclick.com. I couldn't just delete the voicemails. That would be selfish for only me to hear it. They were worthy to share with the world. They live. When Piper puts the glasses on, he can see hidden messages in everything. Marry and reproduce. No independent thought. Consume. Obey. He looks at his money and it reads, This is your God. Marketing and advertising distorts reality. We are bombarded with so much advertising and marketing that our reality is constantly being distorted from every angle. The aliens in this movie are turning Earth's atmosphere into their atmosphere. This same idea was brought out in the movie The Arrival. I've recently seen this same idea in another movie that I cannot recall. The tour the guy who sold out to the aliens gives the alien underground and the things he says like, There are no more good guys. There are no more borders. And... We all sell out every day. What's the big problem? Is quality commentary. They Live wasn't about a simulated reality, but about a distorted reality, a reality that resembles our world. If you can get past the corny dialogue and action scenes, there are some interesting concepts to behold. They were definitely trying to say something with this film. What the bleep do we know? This is one of the most excellent documentary movies that describe the reality I believe in. Quantum Theory... Limits of Five Senses, Manifesting Reality, etc. I hope this format becomes more popular. Some people in this film are also in The Secret. Fred Allen Wolf should be on television more often. Every person should see this movie. The Island All of the people are fed a lie that the outside world is contaminated from nuclear war. They are shown a hologram. The scene where Steve Buscemi explains to Ewan McGregor and Scarlett Johansson that they are clones with implanted memories is the best scene in the movie. Why do they lie, Mac? To keep you from knowing the truth. To keep you from knowing who you are. As you watch the scene, watch it as if Buscemi is talking to you and not a clone, like he is describing real life and not something made up. Training day. Do you want to catch the big bad guys? Or do you want to write traffic tickets your whole life? Do you want the blue pill or the red pill? Transformers the movie animated. The robots come from a place called the Matrix. Transformers. Instead of calling it the Matrix, they call it the Cube. In the movie, Megatron was discovered in the Arctic Circle in 1897. 
He is referred to as an EBE. In real life UFO folklore, in the year 1890 in Aurora, Texas, a UFO visited Earth, crash landed, and was buried there. UFOs have also been called EBEs. More concepts. They are hiding in plain sight. Quantum theory was advertised. Military technology was demonstrated. Starscream turned into an F-22 Raptor. I like when Optimus Prime explained the history of the universe. He mentioned that they didn't know the whole story to history. This concludes Chapter 10, Part 1. Author's Notes. I don't know if you know who Master P is, but he had a song called Bout It, Bout It. And at the beginning he goes, I started this Bout It, Bout It. And that's what I kept thinking. That's what I kept hearing in my head as I was reading this chapter. I'm like, man, I started a lot of stuff and I didn't even realize it. Because, like, I mean, I had uh, The Matrix with Truman Show, Dark City, and They Live. Those three movies are always, or those four movies are always referenced in uh, on conspiracy videos about movies. So, you know, just consider that this was published in 07 and I was writing it between like 05 to 07. And it's before really YouTube was a thing. YouTube existed, but it wasn't a thing. You know, there was no social, I mean, MySpace was out that, you know, I've been saying this over and over again. So what makes this, like this narration neat, what makes this book incredible is the time period that it was created. You know, published in 07, before everybody, there was there was no conspiracy communities really where you could have videos and stuff. So I'm just saying I was really ahead of my time. I'm tooting my own horn. I know you're not supposed to do that, but... You know, nobody tooted my horn in 07, so I got to toot it now, nine years later. Give me a break. Come on. <laughs> Last year, I did start a series called Message in the Movies. I had wanted to start it like in 2009, but just work has been so much that I haven't been able to do it. I think I got three episodes off the ground, and I even had like a deleted scene one too that I had started in 2009. And uh, in the chapter, when I mentioned that I had put in my book in my first book I remember choosing my life in the afterlife to mention the movie section I said you know that that came out in 2002 and I said five years later here I am explaining it so that's referring to all the movie titles the majority of them came from 2002 like what had existed in 2002 uh, not 2007 yet and I was just trying to like elaborate on what that section at the end of the book was. Because a lot of people were like, oh, thanks for your movie suggestions. I'm like, no, that's not what I meant. The website addresses I don't think are there anymore. Uh, the episodes of Message in the Movies. And, and I think there's a playlist on my channel called Movie Reviews. And the Message in the Movies uh, that I've covered are They Live, G.I. Joe, Transformers 2, and which was Revenge of the Fallen, and recently I did The Island in January. And after reading this, it kind of brings happiness to me knowing that I had mentioned The Island in Simulation Theory, and then I finally got to review it 11 years later. That's how long it took, and that's how busy I've been. And obviously They Live, I covered that in Episode 0. There's three episodes, Episode 0, Episode 1, and Episode 2. Hopefully there'll be a lot more, but uh, if you're into movie reviews, check out that playlist and ch uh, inspect it periodically because I will I intend on making a lot more movie reviews since they seem to be fairly popular. Um, talking about The Matrix, you know, everyone talks about The Matrix now. And in 2007, there were some people, but again, the, the internet wasn't the way it is t today. So, And, and my, by me having it in this, in this book... It was important because the amount of people talking about the Matrix wasn't abundant as I had wanted it. Now, I mean, heck, the world that I wanted created exists now. Everyone references the Matrix all the time. Consider that movie came out in 98, and here we are in 2016. So that movie's 18 years old, and it's, it's impacting people to this day. In fact, you know what's funny too is with Dark City and Truman Show... Uh, those are always used in the Flat Earth uh, community videos because Dark City depicts a flat Earth and Truman Show does in a way as well. And, uh, and most recently, Gods, Gods of Egypt was directed by the guy that made Dark City and there's definitely a flat Earth in that movie too. 
and what's what's so amazing reflecting on this chapter is when I put this when I put this out in 07, this was controversial in that people thought I was nuts for saying that information is in movies. When I used to say I, I go to be entertained, people really would laugh at me and think that's ridiculous. Now on the internet, there's so much movie breakdowns and interpretations and looking into the Matrix, They Live, Truman Show. And like I said, at the time in 07, just nine years ago, this was wacky bananas. You're a nut job. Nowadays, this is mainstream. So as Tech9 said, I didn't go mainstream. Mainstream went me. John Lippy didn't go mainstream. Mainstream went John Lippy. And I've been pushing this so hard. You don't have to interact with me on a daily basis, but the people in my world, I, I push and push and push and push all my ideas on them and they become reality. So I've created a world that is in my image in a way. Yeah, I know that's arrogant to say, but let me tell you, I'm saying it because nine years ago and 10 years ago and 15 years ago to say all these things, I was ridiculed. Now, now it's like, yeah, no kidding, John. You thought you just made that up? And I'm like, well, I did, but you know, whatever. But everybody says it now. So thanks to the world for shaping itself the way I wanted it to be shaped in. In 2007, there were only a handful of people that got the Matrix. Most people that liked it, liked it for the martial arts. But, uh, but nowadays, everybody understands the Matrix and references the Matrix. In fact, the people that aren't for the Matrix are the outcasts of society. Now they are the weirdos. The tides have turned. You know, and I, I can't really take the credit for it. You know, David Icke gave a lot of speeches about or he wrote a book children of the matrix and one of his uh stand-ups was called enter the matrix or something like that uh alex jones had the matrix of evil and they you know they were really the pioneers that got these ideas out i just happened my my thoughts just happened to be consistent with ike's and jones's as far as like these topics go so through the three of us and, and others in the conspiracy community uh we've advanced these ideas and you know, this awareness was good to bring to the population. It's excellent for people to question reality and question everything because our reality is very uh, altered and limited and distorted. You know, and 13th Floor has really been a forgotten film and it was like Matrix overshadowed it. But I, I think it was seeing uh, 13th Floor that gave me the idea to make this book. Like I really think simulation theory... Like those words came to my mind after seeing Thirteenth Floor. I think I think somebody thought it was like a horror film. They're like, John, what is what is Thirteenth Floor about? And I was trying to figure out an easy, short way to explain it. And I said, and this is like in '99. You know, I, I saw it on video, so it came out in '98. I saw it in '99 on on VHS, and I think I said to the person, I said, simulation theory, and they're like, simulation theory. That's a pretty. What the hell does that mean? That'd be a cool, a cool title for a book. I don't know if I cover it in this book in the future, but there was a, a a video called Future Fantastic. It was hosted by Scully from X Files. I don't know her her real name, like Jillian something. But that documentary at the time was mind blowing. It had a lot of uh, stuff that we're talking about today: transhumanism, uh, uploading everything to the internet, like the cloud before it was called the cloud, and uploading our memories and a lot of stuff that goes with simulation theory. I read that I think 13th Floor was based on an old book called Simulacron or Simulacra. So the ideas have been out there for a long time. Uh, but, you know, when I published simulation theory, there was no simulation argument yet. There was no... All the stuff that's out there now, like are we living in a simulated world? None of that was out there. I'm telling you. I'm, I'm not saying I created this thing, but I definitely pioneered this. I'm, I, this book isn't a copycat. This is an this was like original thoughts I had based on seeing Thirteenth Floor, and but Thirteenth Floor was presented as fiction. When I put out Simulation Theory, I was like, no, no, no. I think I think we're I think Matrix and all this stuff is trying to tell us something. I think this is real, and even the Matrix is presented as fiction, whereas I'm presenting this as fact. And so, as I have said so many times already. In 07, when I said simulation theory and explained what this, what I'm saying, people thought that was so bizarre and weird. 
and just like no way bro 2016 forget about it i, I think like half the people if you have facebook you've been presented with this idea by now and i think a lot of people definitely at least consider these ideas whereas back then no way I mean, it wasn't even like like no way you couldn't even have this conversation with most people nowadays i think i think most people are kind of into this now and this has always been my curse to be like ahead of everybody so i'm all by myself trying to say hey man look at what's going on look what i figured out and it takes like five to ten years for everybody else to catch up and by the time they catch up i've moved on and then i'm like oh no why do people like it now when i don't care and i, I always miss out uh, i miss out by being there before everybody and i don't know what i did with with those matrix uh 22 minute versions that i had mentioned i used to we used to call them the john version oh you got the john version and the john version was just straight philosophy no car chase none of the stupid action filler stuff it was just straight 22 minutes of hardcore info and it's weird matrix one and two had 22 straight minutes you know if you edit out all the extra stuff and i used to do that with a lot of movies i did it with the island did it with they live i used to like to do that i used to just take all the fluff out because the fluff is what distracts people like back then when i would try to explain message in the movies people would get you know captivated by all the action and the, and the stuff to distract you and i'm like no 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 that's to distract you pay attention here this is the part you're supposed to check out so i would take all the action stuff out and just put all the meat together and usually whatever audience i had they would black out <laughs> people fall asleep with uh when it comes to philosophy so yeah but that was before the internet now i got audiences to check out all my stuff so i love it I'm very happy. I, I, I could, you know what I'm saying? It sounds like I'm disgruntled, but I'm actually, I, I got to be thrilled. The, the world I want exists now and I have an audience and I'm able to share these concepts and there's people that understand it now. People get me, people get it. So I think we're going in the right direction. So uh, that's, the, I think that, that'll conclude this part one. And then part two is about science future, science featured. Yeah, science future, science featured. Instead of science fiction, I call it science future, science featured. And that's it for this episode, the message in the movies. You know, in, in the meantime, why don't you check out the playlist for message in the movies, movie reviews, thoughts, reviews, etc. And I'll see you next time.